Hi everyone. So I'm just gonna do a quick case. Uh, did this together with Aton. It's a great, uh, has some really nice perfusion pearls and it's another way of revascularizing a karate that um, I think is particularly nice. Uh, this is a low and H stroke scale left hemisphere syndrome presentation originally. <clears throat> it's got an old stroke here. So um, look at these maps. You see how just a lot of weirdness here, right? Look, bilateral maybe, probably this never reperfused, so still being huh? Mm, cerebellum seems to be doing something, maybe the thalamus, so it looks a little bit weird. Uh, let's look at these maps. So looking at the maps helps. The maps seem to be uh, kind of bearing this out, right? There's not a lot of motion that's going on. Um, again, Tmax, this is, um, you really use perfusion like this. It's not about like the number, core, whatever. It's about looking at the Tmax to see where the abnormalities are. Where is the occlusion? What's being affected? However affected it is. Super useful that way. It's not about occlusion, exclusion. It's about diagnostic understanding. The CTA actually tells you a ton. There's a carotid occlusion on the left. You see how they're bilateral fetalish looking PCOMs. So you know that the left hemisphere must really be in trouble because um, you know the PCA is also supported by the carotid. You see a small ACOM here, so that don't look too great. This A1 doesn't look very healthy. So likely this is not gonna last for too long and the ophthalmic we can't tell, but it does look a little bit big here. So there's a lot of information. Um, patient worsens, so after like 24 hours. So we take him in, here's the birth views. Now the verts are probably a combination of athero and developmental hypoplasia, right? Remember those GLP comps? So this ain't gonna be too big, this basilar, but you see how ratty that is. That basilar um, probably has some superimposed bathroom on it. Here's a right common injection we do. In cases like these, invest a few minutes into understanding what's going on before we jump to the left side, because um, we think it makes sense. So this is what happens. Small A1, just like the CTA, right? Left side's not looking too hot. Okay, here's the, I see it's not a pseudo occlusion. There's some plot here. It's a, it's, a, it's a real proximal cervical carotid disease issue. Now there's many ways to skin this cat. We'll get to that. The ophthalmic, as you can see, is working hard. Here's the PCA, just like we thought. Okay, so here's what you can do. There's many ways to do this, but it's particularly nice when you can put like a balloon guide into the proximal internal and inflate that. That accomplishes two things. It obviously keeps you, gives you some protection against distal emboli, and it keeps the external patent. Now that has to be patent because of how that ophthalmic looked just a minute ago. So inflate that balloon. Now the walrus is nice in the sense that the balloon is close to the uh, end of the catheter. So I think that's good like this now. So once it's like that, what we do is we don't attach walrus to perfusion. You just kind of leave it open. You don't need to hook it up to a line and, you know, float heparin and clot in there. So what you can do is just leave it open and take a Sophia or whatever you want. You love the Sophia for this and just like hook it up to vacuum and write it up and down and clean out the karate. We didn't come out with too much clot actually. It was in heparin overnight, but uh, some came out of the Petrus cavernous segment. And after we took that out, so we had blood return. Now, once you have blood return in the Sophia, you know it's good. So we come up here, like kind of A1 osteum, M1 osteum. There's blood return, so we do this injection. Doesn't look like we have any distal emboli. Come back, see it looks good. Now you start to see what's going on here. Here's the PCA and 
here is the superior cerebellar. Look at that. Now that's starting to look like some we saw before, huh? So the carotid's open, balloon's still inflated. Now you probably just deflate this balloon, it's gonna be fine. But if you wanna do belt and suspenders before you deflate, put the scepter here or whatever balloon you want, inflate it, then you deflate the walrus. If there's anything that floats up here, ride the walrus up and aspirate just against the balloon. If the carotids, you know, not too torturous, I think it's pretty safe. You get rid of all that clot that's up against the balloon. Can you use a filter wire for that? Because you're thinking you're stenting it. Yes, you can. Uh, if you really hate filter wires because they don't really work, then don't use them. Use the balloon instead. Just don't leave it out. Don't don't inflate it for too long. A couple of minutes, you're probably okay. But uh, filter wire is not our favorite. So this is the post. You see, this is the PCA or a PCOM, PCA, SCAs. Looks exactly like that Tmax does, right? Look at how much cerebellum this supplies. Why is that the case? Because the basilar is hypoplastic and probably has some athro in addition to that. So that is what the left hemisphere was supplying. You can see the tremendous amount of work that um, that ACOM and the ophthalmic had to do. So indeed, there was decreased flow into the thalamus and the upper cerebellum and all that stuff and the perfusions on the money. So there we are, no distal emboli. And that's it. So it looks like this at the end. We didn't stent this one because of multiple medical reasons and it doesn't look like he needs it now. Just gave some integralin and watched it and looked the same. So left it alone. This is the final front, final lateral. This is the final CTA, or CTA I should say. Now, why does it look like this? Because if you think about it, if somebody has a fetal looking PCOM, right? What is the territory that is least supported in terms of collaterals? It's this one, right? How is that gonna get any collateral support uh, from where? So, you know, that's exactly what you see. You see this, and the original presentation was a phasia and field cut, which is also telling uh, for a left hemisphere problem. That's what he's got to show. Otherwise, that is normal. Hope you enjoyed our banana bite and uh, check out more right here. Case library. There's probably like a hundred cases there, um, different varieties. Check them out. Thank you.